welcome to tonight's episode of Beyond Focus TV. I'm your host, Lydia Patel. And as always, we have a very special guest for you. Mr. Easy is in the house tonight. He'll be with us for the next 30 minutes, so stay with us. You're watching Beyond Focus TV. Beyond Focus TV allows you to discuss contemporary topics affecting the Caribbean people on both the national and local level. The show features informed guests who offer insight, debate, and evaluate various issues. Beyond Focus TV builds on the station's mission to provide useful information to the Caribbean people in New York and abroad. Beyond Focus TV, where our viewing audience can get educated, informed, and empowered. Welcome back. You're watching Beyond Focus TV. I'm Lydia Patel, sitting here with a reggae superstar, Mr. Easy. Such a pleasure to have you in the house tonight. Respect, you know, Great so to have you. Beyond um, Focus, yeah. Long time in the business. Um, definitely no stranger to the music scene, um, not just in Jamaica, but here in Brooklyn as well. Yes, so definitely. let's take it back for those viewers who may not be familiar with your music a little bit. Let's tell them a little bit about you and how this all got started. Well, I mean, you know, um, it's all about the sound system business back mm -hmm. in the days, growing up in Brooklyn. Uh, sounds like General, like Power, and mm -hmm. um, just coming up, uh, loving dancehall, discovering Dennis Brown, discovering Danny Hathaway, mm -hmm. you know, joining two forces, two styles together and making it my own. Uh, mm -hmm. Then performing at the Apollo Theater. Yes. You know, yeah, doing, th you know, I mean, just little things like that, yeah, people that, may that, not that, even that, know. That, that, is yeah, such about Mr. Easy, yeah, definitely. Those things are big confident builders for, for art, you know, for artists, you know. So, I mean, it's coming from there, now we're still in the business, and, mm -hmm. and, and I'm, I'm very blessed to still be here performing and making good music at still doing all that. So, looking so, back at your yeah. earlier career, mm -hmm. let's take it back at least 20 years. <laughs> to some of the earlier things that, that yeah. you've done compared to now how has your music how have you evolved you could say you know I mean I've stayed um, definitely relevant you know I mean the music has changed and I've changed with the music mm -hmm. so I mean that's, that's, a, that's, that's a blessing changing with the music because if you can't because if you can't you can be left out you're going to be left out so mm -hmm. I mean it's, it's a blessing just still being here from performing from those days till now, you know, because now it's two thousand, and you're talking about, as you said, twenty years, and I'm proud, you know, to know, that I'm proud of being a part of the music, old music business for so much for so long, and still staying relevant. Absolutely. Yeah. When you first started, mm -hmm. what was your initial goal? Not just to put out a record and get known, but what were you looking for? Did you no, think that all these years later you would still be in the game? No, I mean, started out with just fun, just like everybody, you know, going to school, lunchroom, beating the desk, singing, DJing, and just having fun with it. We, mm -hmm. we, it wasn't a plan to say, this is what I want to do professionally. But, you know, when you love music and the music loves you, you know, you never know. It, and it, it becomes a journey and becomes a part of your, becomes a part of you. You don't even realize years go by and now it's part of your life, you know. So, um... And that's definitely true. That's um, definitely true. I mean, it's, it's, I'm, I'm true to music, you know. I'm true to this. I really love this, and this is what I do for a living. How did your family take it when they really saw that, mm -hmm. okay, he's taking this music thing really serious at the I end mean, of the my, day? My mother, is, my mother is very proud, you know, because she, she has a lot to do with my um, music career. Okay. She supported me 100%. And that's what I always tell people, you know, support your kids once they're doing positive things. And if you see that they're talented, so some things take a little longer to achieve. So, I mean, you got to give them that support and that belief, you know. Don't go and tell them you got to be a bus driver, you got to be this, don't, don't. I'll get a job with benefits. Get a job with benefits. <laughs> or, you know, just stick it out with them, you know. We well, you know what it is. I think <laughs> a lot of times when you have Caribbean parents, Western yeah, parentage, yeah. they come up here and they get stuck doing certain things, and yes. they just want to make sure that so you're good. You're, yeah, they just want to make sure that, you know, you, you, you can survive, you know. That you're not struggling, because they come here struggling. and it's a struggle. And, and it's a struggle. It really it's is a struggle. struggle. So they but, want us to, to they, they want to see better for but, us. But what they don't realize is the struggle that they made has made it much, much easier for you, the next generation, because their struggle is not our struggle anymore. And you know, our struggle to me is much easier. You know, because mm -hmm. if you talk to my mother and she tells you, where she's coming from, and you realize what right now you have it, it's easy for you. Absolutely. The opportunities are really here. You know, it's more before there are certain things we, we couldn't do. There was only one radio station back in those days. Gil Bailey was the only person we could have 
listen to. And now, every you look now is a new radio station. Now you have major stations like the 97s and the 105. That's that we are, our music is are is playing on these stations. So it's definitely come a long way. Oh, most definitely. Mm -hmm. And our culture has really yeah, it yeah. got embraced. Embraced. I mean, you <coughs> it's a little different in the sense for you. I think Jamaicans. Mm -hmm. It's a good thing and a bad thing because when you all kind of had to hold down the torch to represent all the islands, because yes, immediately yes, yes, when they yes, thought yes, of a yes, Caribbean yes. person, oh, you're Jamaican. Jamaican. Yeah, definitely, definitely, definitely. They didn't even know where Trinidad was. Yes, they didn't yes, even know yes. what, what, <laughs> or who. <laughs> I mean, I think it's because of the um, the, the the strong culture of Jamaica, of the the legends that comes from Jamaica. The Marcus Gahab is about Marley. Mm -hmm. You know, when you when you mention these people's name. You know, right away you identify with where Jamaica. So that's what exactly. It is. So it's good in one sense, but mm -hmm. then you typecast it because then you automatically, once you're they hear an accent, yes. oh, you're Jamaican. Yes. But now it's different exactly. because everyone is doing their own thing. The Asian community, the Trinidadian community, Jamaica. So now we are forced to reckon with because now we are all just powerful doing big things instead of one island yes, just trying yes, to compete yes, against the yes, other yes, one yes, we combined all as a region, region together. Yes. So it's, a, it's, a, it's a big mechanism when, when it comes to Caribbean culture in New York City. And even with your music, you hear that flavor of, of, of course, traditional mm -hmm. Jamaican in the sense you know it's dance or you know no, it's, when yes, you... Yes, the real thing. But you put some different flavors in there. Yeah, because, I mean, as I say, you know, so, um, I've done R&B, mm -hmm. uh, so my vibe, my style is mixed with... And that's what makes Mr. Easy different from everyone else. That's why you can identify a Mr. Easy sound from any other artist. And, you know, that's why a lot of people can't duplicate Mr. Easy. Because when you hear Mr. Easy, if, if you try it, boy, you're going to choke, you know. <laughs> <laughs> they, they won't get through very easily. No, 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 it's not that easy. Not that easy. It, it really has. And, of course, you know, you've put out some great songs. Yes. Looking back at the first song that you put together yourself that you actually got to write, mm -hmm. if you look back at that, how do you feel about that today? Well, at first, you know, I mean, when you start writing, because... First, you take on, as I say, I started singing like Dennis Brown. Mm -hmm. started singing like a lot of different reggae artists in those journals before you can find yourself. And when the first time you write a song and you sing it and people say, yo, we love that, you know, you shock yourself because, you know, you actually put the pen to the paper and, and, and I mean, you, you have to smile when you see that's your lyric that people are saying we love that song but that, mm -hmm. that also make that give you confidence to know that you can you can write and because of that situation I realized that I don't have to sing other people's songs you know I, I see a lot of people like there are certain artists people are so used to them anytime they hear a song from them they're looking for do over records even when they do original records, people don't accept them. So I'm a person that fights with original music. Let's keep mm -hmm. doing original music. Mm -hmm. Whether it, it pops off or it doesn't, but at least one thing you can say anytime you hear original, you hear Mr. Easy, you know, it's originality you're going to get. And that's, that's a really, <coughs> really, really good because a lot of times people don't write their own music. No, they don't. And... It's hard when you actually hear that. And I can understand why. I mean, I write with people as well. I have you have a team. You have that a team you. that definitely because you know definitely you, you want different sounds and different collaboration and stuff like that. But and I've been blessed to work with different producers that has big names. Right. You know where I know a lot of artists wish that would see me and say, "Yo, yo, homie can't get for vice with D.F. Kelly. Homie can't listen to you. Homie can't get for work with Tony Kelly." And, and when I look into them, I'm like, you know, so you're really blessing you know? because I mean okay. these are people that. You know that artists are fighting to, to work with, and it just comes naturally. Natural. Well, for hold you. that thought. We'll take a quick break. <coughs> we'll be right back. We got more ears to easy right here on Beyond Focus TV.
Welcome back. You're watching Beyond Focus TV. I'm Lydia Patel, sitting here with the legendary Mr. Easy right here in our studios here at Beyond Focus TV. It's really great to have you here. Yes, so before the break, we are just talking about songwriting. Um, and I wanted to stay a little bit longer on that topic because a lot of times people, they get out. They outsource people. They get a mm -hmm. team, which is nothing mm -hmm. wrong with that. Mm -hmm. But what's your take more in, I say, the rap world, the hip-hop world, about getting other people to write your lyrics that you spit? Oh, I mean, you know, to me, it 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 it, it's, it's, it doesn't bother me when someone does somebody's lyrics. It's how you come across with it and make it your own. Because you hear a lot of artists, a lot of the rappers that come that do other people's material, and you'll never, you can never tell. I know, but <laughs> I think especially with hip hop, it mm -hmm. has to come from within. Like, how true, can you write an true. ill lyric and but, just but, but hand you the page? You might as well spit it yourself. But I realize, you know, one thing I realize. A lot of artists get distracted because most artists, when they bust first, it's always original music. But then you're so busy with trying to keep, keep up with up the with tours the and, the, and, and the, the promotions the, the, and the hype. And some people get caught you in the just hype. Just get stifled on the creativity. Yeah, and then, then and you have demands of trying to put so out. You have deadlines. Deadlines. So now, not everyone can stay focused on that, knowing that this is what's important. And, and I need to come across from my perspective. You understand what I'm saying? Not for them just lose the way and man of a ride for them, then they just disappear because people don't believe them anymore. Mm -hmm. You know, it's mm -hmm. all about believing. That's why people listen to the artists like DMX and you listen to the work that is done. I mean, you could definitely tell that this is coming from his heart. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. this, is, this is from this person. This is not written. And the style that he's doing, no one. Has, when you could, no one could ever write that. But that's funny. He's banned from so many places. His music. Well, you know, it still doesn't have nothing to do with the talent. Very true. You know, the talent is a talent. Talent is there. Yeah, the talent is there. Where do you get a lot of your inspiration? Because we had some people send in those questions. Well, he's been around for so long. Mm -hmm. How do you? How are you still able to write and create? Because different rhythms. If you listen to the rhythms that I've been on. You know, music talks to you. Me and the beat talks to you. And I'm a person, if you give me a beat, once a beat is good, I catch melodies. Real. I'm a real melody person. I catch melodies. And to me, the melody is what is, that's what's important. Because without a beautiful melody, you know, because people learn melodies before they even learn lyrics. That's true. You know, a person you hear a song, you hear them humming it for weeks, months. They don't know Just one that, lyric. Just that when they say it's and stuck then in when your head. They, when, they, when they learn it, then, they, then you start, oh, that's what he's saying. It's just like you listen to an Italian artist or a Spanish act. You don't know a word that they're saying. But then the melody makes you like, what the hell? But this sounds good. Mm -hmm. A lot of Afro beats. I mean, there's a there's a guy from Italy. I think his name is Paparotti. Um, not Paparotti. He's, he's a blind artist. Oh, um, and, and, I know uh, Ocelli. Andrea Bocelli. Yeah, if you listen to Bocelli's music, I, I can't tell you what he's saying, but all I know, I could, I could, stand, I could listen to an old album. And that's so interesting. People wouldn't think that you have such a, a wide span oh, okay. of music that you listen to <laughs> no, on I a personal listen. basis. Yeah, I listen to it. You just named Andrea Bocelli. Yeah, and, <laughs> it's and, a classical. And, and, and when, when I listen to it, it, it also, I learn from that. Mm-hmm. Because, as I say, melodies, I, I, you know, I listen to melodies, and melodies will catch Mr. Easy. And then that makes me know that, listen, you got to find those wicked melodies like these guys. You know, when you get the rhythm, like, I'll, 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 a person will have a rhythm, and when you have the rhythm, what I'll do, I don't want to hear the rhythm. Yet. Don't give it to me. I don't want, I'll have the rhythm, don't listen to it. Because when I'm getting ready to listen to it, I'm, I'm right away I want to hit it. Okay. And the first thing that comes to my head, I work with that. I just work off of that. The first Do you typically idea. build the hook first? Or yeah, you the hook first. And build because, everything around because it. Because what I realized, when you build a verse first, it's harder to come with the hook. Yeah. It becomes difficult. Yeah. And I've sat in a lot of studio yeah, you sessions. Yeah, to come with that hook. So and the best thing to do, focus on knowing that when you have the first thing you hit the rhythm, come with the hook first. And just build the rest of and it. And just build everything. And everything is going to come easier. That's why sometimes you see a person build a hook and you're like, man, I'll wait till next week. I'll go. I can't, because you have the, the most important part of the song. Yeah. Yeah. That, that definitely and is a, a big portion I, of it. <laughs> I mean, working with Burris Hammond has, has taught me that, that Burris teaches me a lot. Being around him, I've learned a lot. 
you know, he's always said, you know, when you hear the first thing come to mind, you know, that when you hear the rhythm and the first thing comes, you, you, you work off of that. Don't fight with it because that's what the rhythm tells